Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the lecture number 35. Uh, we have been discussing about the restricted three body problem. So, we will continue with that. So, if you remember, uh, we worked out this expression So, we have written dr by dt rate of change of the vector r in the barycentric frame this will be equal to rate of change of the vector in the synodic frame plus omega cross r where omega is nothing but omega s s i have removed to uh, just to facilitate just for the uh, ease okay i do not have to carry the subscript Okay, if I differentiate this once more and write this as r dot, this is with respect to the synodic frame. So, I, if I represent this as, okay, uh, let us mark this as with respect to the synodic frame. So, this is from your basic mechanics. Uh, I should have skipped it, but uh, for your purpose, I am working out those who have not done it. So, this part is your dy dt. So, following this notation, now whatever the notation, uh, this uh, the equation we have developed here, this is called uh, transport theorem. theorem in mechanics. And we just need to expand it further to uh, solve the problem. One more step if we do. So, what we can observe that this becomes d by dt. This we are doing with respect to the B frame. In the same way as we have done earlier, we can expand this part and write here x dot times omega cross c1 plus y dot times omega cross c2 plus z dot times omega cross e3 cap. So, th th this part we have expanded. Thereafter, the other part we have to do. and this is with respect to the B frame. We have to remember this part. Okay, but this is according to this part is according to the normal calculus rule. Okay. Once we have done this,
Okay. So, one more thing I would like to point it out here that this is our barycentric frame and here itself will show the synodic frame. This is your x s, y s and z s and the baric centric frame x b, y b and z b. So, therefore, the distance this distance which was shown here this distance is 0 in that case and that part I have not indicated in this place. So, only the rate of change of this vector I am trying to estimate how much this will be while this point and this point both of them they coincide. Otherwise, we will have uh, some extra term appearing there which is uh, not necessary here in this case. So, omega dot cross r and and then omega cross d by d t with respect to the b frame r. And then we can summarize this as x double dot e 1 cap plus y double dot e 2 cap e 3 cap and plus now you can look here in this term this is nothing but omega cross x dot e 1 cap y dot e 2 cap plus z dot e 3 cap this particular term this is the velocity of mass m in the synodic frame. And this is the acceleration ok for one more term I have to write. So, here I will not write. this particular term we can write here this is the acceleration of mass m in the synodic frame. Other term is remaining is this one the third one the third term can be written as omega cross and from here we can insert because this is with respect to drv by dt. So, we can insert from this place r dot with respect to the synodic frame and plus omega cross r. So, this quantity is nothing but the shown here in this place this is your r dot with respect to the synodic frame. So, you have the same term appearing here also and in this place also. So, in the next page we go and therefore, the r double dot with respect to the barycentric frame this gets reduced to x double dot e 1 cap plus y double dot e 2 cap e 3 cap and plus 2 times these 2 terms will add as I am showing, showing here this particular term and this term they will add omega we can take it outside. So, this makes it 2 times 2 times omega cross r dot where r dot 
and uh, particularly because we are denoting it with respect to the synodic frame. So, we can put a symbol here to indicate that this is with respect to the synodic frame. Then uh, I would like to get rid of this symbol rather than using this if we use the symbol R B double dot okay, as the acceleration or R B dot as the velocity with respect to the synodic frame then simply R will be indicating with respect to the synodic frame. I want to get rid of this symbol so that uh, we uh, we are at ease while writing the equation. The other term is omega cross omega cross r plus omega cross. So, this is what we are getting here in this place. Now, this part is if you are aware of your basic mechanics, so this part this is referring to the acceleration with respect to the body frame in which in this case we are calling as the synodic frame. And if you remember this term is Coriolis term. with a minus a if you take it on the left hand side. Okay. So, the body acceleration can be represented in terms of uh, this particular term which is up, which appears as the Coriolis, Coriolis term. So, minus 2 times omega cross R s dot this is your Coriolis term or the Coriolis acceleration we call this and this is your centripetal acceleration or the centripetal term. or we can say ok. So, with this at uh, our disposal now we can uh, write the equation of motion what we have developed uh, by uh, proper formulation. So, R s dot this notation I will drop and I will write here simply as R R dot and uh, what wherever the B is appearing it will appear uh, it will indicate it is with respect to the very center here in this case if I am dropping this. So, it is indicating it is with respect to the synodic frame and this is for our convenience. Similarly, omega s we have dropped and written simply as omega omega and this we can write as omega times E 3 cap which is along the z direction of the synodic frame z direction of z axis of synodic frame. We have fixed our frame such that the angular velocity of the synodic frame it lies along the its z direction. Okay. To further process we need to expand this one and this one and once we expand it and write it then we can write the equation of motion uh, what we have used uh, written in the terms of the barycentric reference frame. Okay. So, let us expand it omega cross omega cross omega cross r
and these are the components in the synodic frame. Okay, once we expand it, so for this part I am leaving it to you. Once you expand, you get here minus omega a square, omega this omega and this omega that makes it omega a square, and rest of the things that gives you x times c1 cap plus y times c2 cap. That means it is a minus omega a square x e1 cap minus omega a square y e2 cap. E3 cap you can, as you can see from this place, this drops out and E3 times C1 that gives you E2, e, E2 which appears here and then uh, okay, you, you can check it, I, I will not take time, I will not spend time over this. Uh, th this is the result that you are going to get. Another part remaining is omega times R dot S this term. omega cross r dot which we have written as omega r s dot this symbol I am dropping omega times e 3 cap cross x dot e 1 cap plus y dot e 2 cap plus z dot e 3 cap. And here this part E2 times C1, this is minus Y dot E1 cap and this part will be 0. So, here we get omega X dot E2 cap minus omega Y dot E1 cap. Now, we assemble all of them in this equation. Let us name this equation as A. R double dot with respect to the barycentric frame. This gets reduced to all the terms we have to write x double dot e 1 cap plus y double dot then we have this term here this is plus 2 times omega s times r s here we insert the values And the third term is omega cross omega this part omega here. So, if we insert we have to insert this value there. So, this is minus with minus sign E 1 cap plus omega square y times E 2 cap. This is what we have written here in this place. Now, we combine the uh, corresponding vector together, so, this gets reduced to x double dot minus 2 times omega y dot minus omega square x times e 1 cap y double dot plus 2 times omega x dot and then minus omega square y times here e 2 cap plus z double dot times e 3 cap. So, this is your r double dot with respect to the barycentric frame. 
so therefore as we have written earlier this gets reduced to x double dot minus 2 omega y dot minus omega square x e1 cap plus E2 cap plus E3 cap and on the right hand side we have to insert the term here which we have written in this place. So, this is your with respect to the barycentric frame. So, R double dot with respect to the barycentric frame. So, on the right hand side we have this term. So, we will insert that term there. minus mu 1 by r 1 cube r 1 minus mu 2 by r 2 cube r 2 and then r 1 and r 2 values we have to insert there and separate out the terms. So, we will get 3 second order differential equation which we need to solve. So, let us first develop this part. Okay. If we develop this part, it will be easy to work out on the next phase. So, we here we do it in quickly and let us name this equation as this whole thing as equation B. Rewriting or expanding expanding RHS right hand side in equation B yields. So, we have minus mu 1 by R 1 cube R 1 minus mu 2 by R 2 cube R 2 this can be expanded as by R 1 cube. Now, R 1 we have already written if you remember this term was x minus this term. This particular part we can expand and write it here. Okay, for Okay, uh, let us go and uh, write there itself. In this place, it is uh, write systematically. So this is R minus x one with respect to the barycentric frame or the uh, with respect to the uh, origin B we have written. So, uh, x 1 B or x B 1 A, anything we can write here uh, it is ok. So, uh, R minus let us write this as uh, x B 1 okay, and minus mu 2 by r 2 cube r plus x b 2 e 2 cube and then we expand it. This is from this place x b 1 e 1 cap and uh, r minus plus x b 2 e 2 cap. Okay, therefore, the this right hand side then we can further expand and write this as mu 1 by r 1 cube x e 1 cap plus y e 2 cap plus z e 3 cap minus x b 1 e 1 cap and minus 
mu 2 by r 2 cube z e 3 cap plus x b 2 e 2 cap. So, the right hand side for their that part it becomes minus mu 1 by r 1 cube x minus r x minus x b 1 times c 1 cap plus y times e 2 cap z times e 3 cap minus mu 2 by r 2 q and this will be x plus b 2 times e 1 cap. This term we are arranging r we are putting the uh, you look here in this part this is x plus here this is x b 2. Okay, so, x b 2 has appeared rest of the terms are simply y e 2 cap plus z e 3 cap okay. and then we can insert here in this place and thereafter we can separate out the terms. So, at this stage instead of copying the whole thing on the next page again I will take liberty and this term will be equated with uh, I will show it by different color this term will be equated with the term here which contains e 1 cap and here also the e 1 cap. So, these two terms can be combined together and if we combine them together. So, in the next page we write it x double dot minus 2 times omega y dot minus 2 times omega y dot and then minus omega square x and this will be equal to minus mu 1 by r 1 q x minus x b 1 minus mu 2 by r 2 q x plus x b 2. This is what we have picked up this term and this term we have picked up there and along with this common multiplication terms are also there. So, they will enter in that place. Thereafter, we take the next term, we take up this term. So, y double dot plus 2 times omega times x dot minus omega square y, this is what this term is, the second term, and this will be equal to minus mu 1 by r 1 cube y minus mu 2 by r 2 cube y. And similarly, we have z double dot this is the last term here existing. So, z double dot with this there is nothing no other terms are there. So, we write here z double dot this equal to minus mu 1 by r 1 cube z minus mu 2 by r 2 cube z which we have picked up from this place and this place. So, these are the these are the three second order differential equations representing motion of mass 3 or mass m motion of mass m in the synodic frame. Why? Because x x double dot y double dot it is now represented in terms of the synodic frame which we are 
telling as the body frame not as the inertial frame and we need to solve all these three equations so i will mark them as the equation number 1 equation number 2 and equation number 3 these three equations need to be solved worked out in order to get the solution so the solution for this it's a solved in a different manner okay. instead of uh, getting a explicit solution we get for this an implicit solution which represents the behavior of the system okay. and th the solution to this then we are going to look into the next lecture so we stop here uh, thank you very much